Okay, everyone, we're back again at it on the 3rd of May, 2024, uh, two days after my surgery. Still got the little bagging catheter right next to my heart. Um, I th believe I talked to my urologist's office uh, yesterday, I believe it was. And I guess I got a tentative schedule in two weeks to have the catheter removed and the bag. So I won't be left holding the bag anymore. So uh, that is pretty good. I feel pretty good. And what we're going to do today is we're back on the 7039 Silvertone chassis. And I managed getting the... Um, the terminal strip that's mounted right here that was mounted right here on a thing now this is this uh, solder point here is a little well a lot more excessive than uh, than the last chassis had in it um, I guess they didn't want this to go anywhere because uh, they attached a lot of doodads to it so um, I managed to get it done with my high-powered scope <laughs> and um, and the reason that is is because there is uh, a capacitor attached to this terminal here it comes out goes over here this resistor ties to the other end of that there's a resistor hidden way under and you never know it if you didn't look for it. I mean, if you looked at the schematic, you wouldn't have no idea where in the hell that one went to. And I almost missed it on the last chassis that I did of this. Besides that, there's another one hidden way down in there. on Back behind this thing, or up top of it, or snuggled back in there nice and, and neat. And... There is a second one right down in there that almost parallels it, but it goes to a different lug of the uh, B7 tube, I think. I think that's B7 tube. Um, it's a tube socket that I know. Uh, and we're going to get started on replacing these caps right in here and opening up some room in here so that I can put the uh, IF cans back in when I'm ready or it's ready uh, we've got quite a few up in here there's one two here um, there's one there uh, there's a couple over in here probably can't see them very well um, There's one right there, and there's another one down there that I covered in my last video of the previous 39. Um, that's got a resistor parallel in it. It's a cap and resistor in parallel. Uh, soldered off to these, between these two um, tube sockets here. Um, I, there's one tucked up in here. Uh, these here, I considered move, uh, replacing those. I think I replaced one in the other uh, chassis, but it didn't. It, it didn't. I couldn't see where I had replaced one, so these would probably still be good. But I mean, they may require a replacement. Maybe not all, but not, that one there. That mica one there, we didn't replace in the last one either. Nor this domino mica. Uh, we didn't replace it either. Um, we've got a, one here, a couple here. Uh, these are our E-caps. Uh, still dangling around here. we got a couple up in here on the tone control. Uh, I think we might have adapted these to a degree we might have fudged on them a little bit to get a a more uh 
because I think there's there's three I think there's two di two other settings besides the on setting I think the on setting gets you to a brilliant uh, what they call brilliant tone another one is a more of a bass tone and the other one's a kind of an intermediate tone so uh, I think we tweak these there's three of them tucked up back up in here one way back up in there and a couple right here next to each other uh, we've got this point one right here that comes off I think it's comes off the B plus line to ground but don't quote me on that um, and one here the coupling cap and another coupling cap right there so we're gonna get started on this thing today and uh, get as much as we can get done before I get uncomfortable and we will we will stage it throughout when we get an area done we'll come back to it we'll video it a little bit tell you what we experienced and uh, or any workarounds that we needed to do and uh, I think what's going to have to happen here is I see this one side here of this trimmer rail is soldered on along with the the screw that goes on there I might have I may have to well I'm going to make the attempt of getting that solder out of there with my sucky tool free up the screw so we can get it out of there and this other one is looks like it's untouched so we can get this thing here moved off to the side so we can get down in there to that capacitor these are going to be difficult for novices uh, this particular radar is going to be a little kind of a lot dif uh, difficult for novices looking to get started what I would suggest for those interested in getting started in this field start on an AM only radio uh, I started doing multi-band radios right off the bat and once I got my bearings right and got more uh, experience looking at the schematics and associate that's why I number my my caps when I put them back in um, posterity um, it lets me know that uh, where they are in the chassis may not be <laughs> the way they look on the schematic so once you start getting the some water under the bridge you you start picking up on things and oh so that's the way they do it ah so yeah the uh tie points on empty socket pins yeah that that was a curve um the way they did uh daisy chaining uh, off of terminal boards terminal strips and everything ah that was a learning curve uh, you get familiar with these like I say this one here's the th uh, third one third one um, you get you get experience and you you know what to look for and that's the reason why I document a lot of stuff is because when I when I started this not this but when I started doing refurbish furbishing on old tube radios um, they uh, hang on a minute all right thwarted uh, when I started doing these radios, uh, I mean, it got very complex. I mean, I was really overwhelmed. And, uh, but I, I managed working my way through it. I mean, nothing uh, gives you a better exposure to 
uh, situations as um, working through it and uh, making your own way. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was a real tussle, uh, but like I say, that book that I showed you on one of the other videos, it kind of really helped me out. But I mean, not as far as point-to-point -point wiring and everything else like that. But uh, it's a hell of a lot easier in print, printed circuit boards <laughs> because they can go everywhere. Um, so let me get in, started into this, and we'll get uh, we'll come back soon. Hang on. All right. Still Tuesday. A little about 12:30 in the afternoon. We've managed getting these five underway. These are the ones that are buried right around in here. There's two down there in the basement. One up here. One over there. And. The one I told you was down underneath there, well, um, it's been changed. And keep in mind that is the number 25 cap. The 25 cap, I believe, is that one. I believe it is. It is. Yes. So, um, now, I managed to get this attachment point loose on this trimmer rail and uh, now you can you can see that one cap right there pretty well let me get a light um, see right down in there there's the cap with the parallel resistor right there um, I think I believe the last one I did was I just clipped them both out and put a new resistor in it in place and a new cap that's the easiest thing to do so all resistors in this area so far the area that has been worked everything up here down here even that one this one over here those two there this one these and that way down in there this one this one this one this one that one are all checking out with intolerance getting to those are going to be <laughs> a drill here at Corvecus they could be good so uh, we're going to continue on we're going to slog our way through and uh, try to get a little bit more today but I think what we're going to I'm going to do first is go in grab my doggy and give him a hug and and have me some lunch and then uh, we'll come back and we'll think about it <laughs> so stay tuned we'll have more now yeah, right there we are we're Packed in there like sardines. Got them all completed on, under the chassis. We might have one above the chassis. I'm not. I don't remember. But there are 19 total, including the two E caps. Uh, going to touch base. There's a couple buried back down in there. You're gonna have to get this thing out. Hopefully. I don't remember if the last one was soldered in. I think it, I don't think it was, but you never know. They might have stripped the uh, screw uh, when they put that in there and uh, just decided to just go ahead and solder it. That way, make sure it gets a good connection to the ground. Um, but number 12 and 14 are down in there. Here is the one that has the resistor paralleled with it, number 19. It's got a 330 ohm resistor wrapped around it. Number 15 is buried down in there also. You'll have to keep it tight to the chassis side uh, because of this 
mounting screw. If it goes deep, you're liable to scratch it. Okay, we've got all of these covered in the last segment. I believe we had those covered in the last segment, but we got them covered now. Now over here, coupling caps and the uh, 29 and 30, what are those? 29 and 30, oh, those are the, uh, the plate uh, caps. Uh, we got one that comes off of this 6K6, comes up here to this terminal board and links in the two uh, tone, tonal caps for when this thing is switched on and moved to the other two positions. You get the brilliant base and intermediate. None of these in here are touched. Uh, we had the radio working. I believe we had it working on the initial checkout. Um, so I don't believe, I didn't replace these in the last one so I, I'm I'm expecting not to do it here since it worked. Um, what else was there? We covered that one down in there in the deck. Um, over here. Okay, and the resistors in the rest of the spots checked out. So, um, we're ready to flip this baby over and, uh, and start putting it back together. And getting the connections made to the tuner section and everything so I'm gonna try and do that tomorrow it is uh, about a quarter to five uh, still Friday um, we'll get the tone we'll get the uh, boost controls in and um, we'll try to get the uh, the tuner section over there uh, nestled back in so we can get these connections to the back side of the uh, trimmer rail on the thing but first I want to make sure that the um, that the uh, the release mechanism for the friction release on the uh, on the push button assembly is is going to work properly and get a uh, a grommet for that thing that's going to be sized good enough to uh, to make the change on that uh, manual control of the uh, tuner. So, um, tomorrow we're going to be doing that right here. And uh, we'll get the clamshell on that. We'll get hopefully this all buttoned back in with the grommet on it and the, um, the tuner assembly. Uh, tuner assembly tuner slash uh, push button assembly so we're done for today so we'll see you on the next video hope you enjoyed this one and got something out of it um, and like I said before these here are rough for a novice um, start with a uh, AM only radio get familiar with the schematic Never do anything like you see these other people do with scratching their head and wondering why this is hooked there and what why they did it this way and then Review that schematic and it will tell you a lot about how they thought about the process And you can see how in the hell they put it together The only hard thing is the point-to-point -point wiring. I mean they could they could have went this way and they could have went that way but start with the simple ones first um and get your feet wet and then move into something that's going to be like AM FM uh, you're going to need you're going to need some alignment equipment and stuff for the, for the AM and FM too especially if you're going to be doing recapping and um, these things way to go you get into those tight spaces like that where other people fall with it so hope you got something out of the video Enjoy your weekend. Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. Have a brew for me. I don't drink anymore. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things I don't do anymore. But, that's a different story. See you on the next video. Thanks for watching.